Hey everyone, so today I want to build an app that's going to use React State to toggle these different active squares. So let me close this down and get that started. Alright, so I had already prepped React App to get started and I'll show you what I did. So in the source file, if we go into app.css, you'll see that there's just this text align center. And if you go into app.js, I just have this app with, hello, with an H1 that says hello. And you can see I got rid of the logo as well. But that's pretty much all I did. And once you get there, you are ready to get started with me. So since I'll be using the, the use state react hook, I'm going to get started with const. I'm going to open up this array because we're going to use it to deconstruct an array coming from use state. I'm going to say app state and the modifier I'm going to call change state. And that is going to equal use state. And notice how this auto import pops up. Let me go ahead and click on that so it brings in use state from React. But actually, I just noticed it did it wrong. So yeah, let's go ahead and say use state up here. Okay, great. So now that that's handled, let's go ahead and get in here and use an object inside. Now inside this object, I need to have two different values in here. I need to say the active object, which is going to start off as null. And then I'm going to have an array of objects. Let's call this objects and let that be an array. Oh, and make sure that we have a comma in here separating, just like any normal object. So inside objects, let's go ahead and put in a couple of objects. And I'm just gonna say ID one, and that's gonna be one of these objects to iterate through. So this one is going to be ID two. This one, let's just go ahead and call this ID three. And this ID four. And the only reason why I'm built why I'm putting these together is because I need something to iterate through and something to then log as the active object. But we'll get to that in a little bit. So first thing that we probably want to do is we want to iterate through these and see them on the screen. So let's go ahead and just do that before anything else. What I can do is open up some curly braces to let JSX know that I'm using JavaScript. So let's say app state dot objects dot map objects is going to be oh, objects is going to be an array so we get to use this map array iterator so it is map and inside here I'm going to say element oops looks like I got out of the block let's say element and then index and really the index is going to be doing most of the work here because I'm returning something back, I need these to be uh, parentheses as opposed to curly braces. So now let's get on a new line just so we can clean things up. And I'm going to add a div here. And these are gonna, this is gonna be the placeholders for the boxes that we create. And since we will be creating multiple divs, we need to give each div a key that is going to be equal to the index which is this bit right here, all right? And as, in addition to the index, we're gonna want a class name in here that we can just leave blank for the time being. And let's give it an on-click event listener that we can also just leave blank. Uh, so the first thing that we probably wanna talk about is the class name because that's how we can actually see it on the, on the screen. So let's get our app.css over here and start working with app and then start working with this div and see how we can work this out. So I'm going to get rid of the text align center and I'm going to give it a display property of flex. I'm going to come down here and say the height of 100 VH, which is, stands for view height, the 100% of the height of the screen that it's currently being rendered on. And then to center these things, I'm going to say justify content center and then align items center. Justify content is gonna center them horizontally while align items will center them uh, vertically. So there's probably one more thing we need to add in here, which is going to be flex flow. So this one right here, flex flow. And we are gonna say row wrap. And now we should start working on this div right here. Uh, let's go ahead and put a placeholder in here. Let's call this box. 
and we'll start it off as inactive. And we need to build some classes for box and a class for inactive. Let's create box over here in our CSS file. I am going to give it a width of 200 pixels. I'm gonna give it a height of 200 pixels. To space them out, I'm gonna give it a margin of 10 pixels. And then uh, because we don't want them to be too snappy, we want some smooth transitions, I'm going to say transition. In the sense what I will be transitioning is the background color. I'm going to say background color and I am going to transition it over 0.1 seconds and it will be ease in, ease out. And that will be our smooth in and out transition effect. But we need to style the inactive and active as well. So since we have inactive, let's go ahead and say inactive and make sure it knows that we're targeting a class here. Let's give it a background color and we have to find a background color. So I'm gonna open up Chrome and look up flat UI palette. And I don't know how to spell palette, but let's see what comes up. Great. Uh, so for inactive, I'm going to choose amethyst. And for active, I'm going to choose uh, Peter River. Two pretty common colors that you see on the internet, so they you know they go well together. So background color, let's paste that in there. And let's go ahead and open up our terminal. And uh, the hotkey for that was control backtick. And I'm gonna say npm start. And let's see what we get out of this. Oh, so we probably shouldn't leave on click empty. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. I wasn't sure if it was gonna let us get away with it, but apparently not. So let's save it. And now we can see that we have our boxes. Let's go ahead and change this to active and see what we get. Great. We need, to, we need this to be active only if this active object corresponds to the object that was clicked. So to get started, let's go ahead and create the on click event. So on click it's here, and this will be a function. And let's go ahead and great. Let's go ahead and close this down so we can have a little bit more space to play around with. Let's close this off. Awesome. So the first function that I want to create is going to be toggle active. So let's say function toggle active. The active will probably will need to take the index of which item it's coming it's coming in on. So I'm going to say index. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to use this oh change change. Let's call this change state instead. Awesome. All right, uh, let's go into toggle active and I need to use change state. I need to go ahead and put the object in here to make sure that I don't overwrite what's going on in state. I need to make a copy of it. So app state, which is called spreading. I'm spreading the object out and then I'm going to set the active object and let's go ahead and give us some more room apps uh, to app state dot objects and index. Okay, and so let's add that event list. Let's go ahead and add that function to this on click event by saying toggle active index. So we're talking about this index goes in here, which that index ends up letting us find which one we're actually clicking and then setting that to the active object right here. So it starts off as null and after I click it, I'm expecting the object it belongs to to now be the active object. Let's go ahead and say npm start. And 
I'm going to open up the inspector really quick. So I can see the state over here. See the active object is set to null. And I do have my objects in here. When I click on this, now we can see that the active object is now the fourth one. If I click on that, the first one here, now the active object is ID1. So this is cool. Uh, the next step is to use this to then style each the squares. So let's close this down, clear this out. Again, I'm a fan of giving myself space to read here. So let me say function, and what I'm gonna do is say toggle active styles. And just like that first function, I'm going to need to have the index because I need to know which one I'm talking to. Let's give myself some space. And then I'm going to say if app state dot objects index. So I'm grabbing the index from here. Index is the same exact thing as app state dot active object then what I need to do is return box active. Box active. Else, we need to return box inactive. And because I'm lazy, inactive. Okay, and we need this to be in our class name here. So since we'll be using JavaScript now to return it, let's go ahead and put some curly braces in here. And I'm going to say toggle active styles index. And let's see what we get. Let's clear this out. I'm going to say npm start. And before getting started, let's go ahead and open up the inspector. Because if there's any problems, that's going to be what tells us that there is. Okay, let me go ahead and click on this. And now it looks like it goes active, and I can see the active object is ID4. And now when I click this, it should change though. Great. And so now we have that, that active toggling. Awesome. I hope this was informative.